This episode brought to you by Stardust, fan sharing video reactions to movies, TV, and trailers. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Tim Burton has gone from one of the world's most unique directors to one of the world's most commercial directors to, you know what, just put someone in black eye makeup and we'll see it to feel somewhat artsy. But believe it or not, there was a long period of time where Tim Burton kind of had the golden touch. From financial hits like Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands to critical hits like Ed Wood and Nightmare Before Christmas, his biggest disaster at the time was his blockbuster hits didn't always lend their ways to Happy Meal toys. <laughs> Every long line of success has its Mars attacks. Tim Burton's was Mars attacks. Though Burton did make other good movies after this one, and not all his previous films pleased everybody, this was the first film that got people asking, what is he thinking sometimes? The trailers, at first, seem really funny, with cartoonish effects, a humorously large cast, and as they never left out, Tom Jones. And yes, Tom Jones. It's not unusual you want to be loved. <laughs> it also came on the heels of Independence Day, so people thought it might be a satire of that. Not realizing that Independence Day was already supposed to be bad. Right? It looked goofy and enjoyable enough, but it was both a critical and box office flop. Even Billy Crystal made fun of it in song at the Oscars, telling Jack Nicholson, Sit back and relax. Forget about Mars Attacks. However, it's getting a following as one of those uniquely immature dark films like Death to Smoochie or Bad Taste. So is it not bad, just secretly inspired? Or is it bad, just bad in all the right ways? Well, I'm here to see if it's actually worth any of that recognition. Is it brilliantly childish or childishly childish? Let's take a look with Tim Burton's secretly brilliant blunder? Mars Attacks. So it sets its tone quite clearly with its first big hilarious joke. Cows on fire! <laughs> this is clearly a much better Happy Meal tie-in. After that, we get a pretty kick-ass opening with one of Danny Elfman's most catchy and somehow threatening themes. <laughs> Though for such a visually pleasing introduction, couldn't they move the Earth a little bit more centered with the credits? My OCD will not stand for this! Unless, of course, it's standing in a symmetrical pattern. Flying saucers from Mars line up around the Earth, getting the attention of President Jack Nicholson. And yeah, I know all these characters have other names, but with these many celebrities, are you really gonna call Jack Nicholson Dale? Or Natalie Portman as Taffy? Or completely pointless double performance as Jack, we love you, but what are you doing? What, 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 what are you doing? Galaxy's gonna be the best hotel in Vegas. Best. Yeah, not only does Nicholson play the president, he also plays a hotshot tycoon in Vegas and... Go on over at the roulette. Play our anniversary. Stay off of black. Did any of that make you laugh? Because that's basically all it is. I wonder if he just came on set blind drunk dressed like that and they were like, You know what? Shoot a few scenes. Jack Black isn't a thing yet, so we have to convince people there's more celebrities in here than they think. And yes, that's Annette Benning as his wife. She's kind of a new age hippie flower child, and if you took out her being married to Jack Nicholson, you'd miss... Honestly, I have no idea. It doesn't add anything, and half the time I had to remind myself she's even married to him. I think they've come to save us. <laughs> Though it would have been a lot more powerful if they left this scene in. Stop it, you weed, you baby, shut up! But Nicholson is interrupted by... Nicholson to tell the world about the Martians. And our world will never feel quite the same again. Oh look, his daughter wears black over her bed because... Lydia. Next, we have talk show host Sarah Jessica Parker, who's dating news anchor Michael J. Fox. Oh, they want me to go interview that professor from the White House? We should have got that guy. Well, I can't help it if your people are too slow. She's just in a weird mood because her Sex in the City survey said she was Samantha. She is clearly a Steve Brady! Next, we have Lucas Haas, Jack Black, Joe Don Baker, Christina Applegate, the agent from Beetlejuice, and the lady with curlers from Edward Scissorhands. Surprisingly doing nothing of interest. Putting such a strange combo together, something interesting would happen by accident. 
But look, Lucas Haas really likes donuts. Hey, Ma, you want a donut? He made the international sign of the donut. If you need anything, any donuts or anything, give me a call, all right? This will be his arc. Pam Greer is a bus driver who has trouble keeping track of her kids while her ex-husband, Jim Brown, is an ex-fighter now working in Vegas. And if you're wondering what he does in Vegas, I honestly have no clue. He just walks around in this pharaoh costume. Because ex-fighters doing that is a draw? Again, let's see if anything of interest is happening. Hey, Dad. Who's that? Neville? Yeah. How you doing? Man, give it back. Leave me alone. Not even by mistake. Will Martin Short hitting on hookers make for some good comedy? The stress at work is um, unbelievable. Guess not! How are so many strange and colorful people led by a strange and colorful person turning out to be such bland and colorless toothpicks? Mathematically, it doesn't seem possible. Okay, here we go. The Martians interrupt Parker's TV show with Pierce Brosnan. Oh, and Pierce Brosnan's in this. Is he interesting? Maybe they can tell us about our universe. How it started. Where it's going. No. On to the Martians. <laughs> Thing in my house. Oh, and Glenn Close is the first lady. God, there's a lot of wasted talent in this. What's her one note? Well, they're not going to eat off the Van Buren China. Well, it's no donut arc, bud. The Martians at first seem to be the best part of the movie, with their funny design and unbelievably bizarre language. <laughs> but you'll find even that wears thin after a while. For now, though, they're a lot more entertaining than the human characters. Even the study of them produces some enjoyably surreal humor. I've been refining a translating computer. All green of skin. Dark is the suede that mows like a harvest. What the hell does that mean? And for the record, we never do find out what that means. I am strangely okay with that. It's like adding logic to the room. Just something should never be explained. But others should. Like, why are Martin Short and Michael J. Fox doing nothing funny? If the Martians land, will the press have access? Can we do interviews? We'd have to establish contact, uh, work out whatever communication problems, and then I guess we just see what happens. Why does this scene even exist? Is it to build up that Michael J. Fox is gonna do interviews with the Martians? I guess that can be funny. Is it just for this one throwaway joke? Do the Martians have two sexes, like we do? Must not laugh, must not justify pointlessness. Oh, this will get the comedy back on track. I got this chump, owes me a lot of money, needs a wake-up call. What I'd like for you to do is, uh, use that patented left hook on him. I'm trying to get back with my wife. Um... <laughs> finally, the Martians seem to be landing. Well, good, we can finally see how they interact with these hilarious characters. Or we could give them a podcast. I know they only say one word, but honestly, I still think it'd be more entertaining. The Martians land, and using their translator, they try to communicate. We come in peace. But the Martians see a released dub and start firing on everyone. Okay, we've been spending 40 minutes building up these boring characters, but finally we're gonna utilize them. They're gonna interact with the Martians. Like Jack Black's dummy soldier is about to attack. Is he gonna kick their asses or find out he surprisingly gets along with them or? I surrender. <laughs> or just dies? And okay, cool. Playing with expectations, I guess. All right, Michael J. Fox is heading towards them. Is he gonna try and do an interview with them or exploit them in some way or? <laughs> just dies as well. Okay, I, I, uh, really. They take Sarah Jessica Parker. Okay, well, does she give them fashion advice or compare pets or? <laughs> well, at least she's still alive. I never thought I'd say that in a joyful sense about any of these characters, but at least it's another alternative to just dying. Okay, so the first couple of character interactions with the Martians weren't that funny. We at least get a few cool set pieces, like this B-movie autopsy lab, or this Dr. Strangelove-style war room. It's just a shame nobody's saying anything funny in them. Notice the highly developed cranial nerve system here. This explains, of course, the cerebral arteries. I think an actual autopsy would be more funny than this. Okay, Tim, you got to film in some of these sets you thought were so cool as a kid. 
Can you actually entertain us now? But the Martians, come on, they were pretty funny, right? They still gotta get a few laughs. <laughs> Well, I'm sick of their voices now. At first it was kind of funny, but then they go Star Wars Holiday Special and have it be the one sound we ever hear out of them and there's no goddamn subtitles! Oh, let me guess. Ack, ack! You sure this wasn't a troll movie? But it's cool. We have a ton of other hilarious stuff, like Annette Bening's deep social commentary. The human race doesn't deserve to live. An ex-husband and ex-wife still pointlessly being an ex-husband and ex-wife. I love you. I love you too, Byron. Hey guys, here's the best reactions to what I just reviewed this week. Michael J. Fox, Jack Black, Pierce Brosnan, Sarah Jessica Parker. And the acting is the most boring thing in the entire film. Gack, gack, gack. If anything, I got a ton of laughs. Yeah, I thought it was funny. I miss the good old days when I didn't know this movie existed. Was anyone else hoping that the aliens were gonna win in the end of the movie? Because that's all I was thinking. The fuck did I just watch? Knack, 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 knack. Knack, knack. Well, only in America will people vote for the Joker to be their president. You have opinions, a lot of opinions, about movies, TV shows, even trailers. There's so much to talk about. You get emotional about them just like anybody gets emotional about them. Well, now you don't have to wait to get that raw emotion straight to the internet. Why? Because we got Stardust app. It allows you instantly to film your reactions to movies, TV shows, and even trailers. Happy? Angry? Confused? Whatever it is and whatever your reaction is, Stardust is there to show it. Some of the wildest and craziest reactions are on there and they're so much fun to watch. There's a lot of variety, endless possibilities, and they're definitely worth checking out. I even use it myself. This week I gave my thoughts on Mars Attacks, of course, the trailer for Ocean's 8, and the trailer for Rampage. It's there to get the first and best reaction that you got. It's a ton of fun and 100% free. So check out other people's opinions as well as sharing your own. Also, stay tuned afterwards to see how you can be in the next Nostalgia Critic. So the White House thinks the Martians misinterpreted the dove as a sign of war, so they decided to meet up again in front of Congress. Again, this could be funny, the politicians trying to convince them to join the Psy, pushing their political beliefs on them. There's some enjoyable possibilities here. <laughs> or just kill them! Now don't get me wrong, it is a little funny that absolutely nothing provokes them this time and the exact same thing happens. I get it. And trust me, this would be hilarious if the exact same thing didn't happen throughout the rest of the goddamn movie! Yeah, this is pretty much just the rest of the film. Why dedicate so much time to these boring characters if you're just gonna do the same thing to them over and over and over? They blew up Congress! <laughs> Yet somehow it's still not as funny as what's really going on in Congress. They take Pierce Brosnan this time, and seeing what they do with Parker and her head, at least there's hope that something interesting will be done with him. Or you can do less than what you did with her. Just take the head off and stop. Brilliant. Yes. Don't put it on anything, don't morph it or change it, just stop. I'm sure they did it so they could get out this amazing knee slapper. This is terribly frustrating, I'm just not feeling myself. You know, there's pushing the envelope and then there's taking the envelope back, peeling off the stamp, and then neatly putting the envelope back in a drawer. This does that. President Nicholson argues with General Rod Steiger about what to do. I'm not going to start a war. We have to strike now, sir! Annihilate! Kill! Kill! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! You will believe chilling drama can come from... Mars attacks. There is a pretty creative joke involving one of the Martians sneaking in dressed as a human played by Lisa Marie. Not only is it funny how obvious it is, but it's even funnier seeing how nobody seems to notice. The movements, the design, the performance, it definitely gets a giggle. But even that goes on for too long. 
This could get a laugh for what? Maybe a minute? They give us six. Six minutes of this one gag. And even when her cover is blown, it doesn't make sense. Her skin is ripped revealing the alien inside, but the mouth doesn't move when she opens it. Is it supposed to be a bad effect? I mean, okay, the effects aren't great, but they're not really bad enough either to make it clear if this was intentional or not. Especially seeing how the mouth moves fine in later scenes. But whatever, at least they're actually interacting with one of the characters this time and not just blandly killing him off. Ah! Oops, spoke too soon. Oh, come on, he's a sexual deviant! If they want this death to be more fitting, shouldn't she have bitten off... something that would make him more short? She makes it to the president's bedroom to try and kill him, but he's saved by Secret Service. This angers the Martians, and to be fair, they do get a few laughs here. The suit-up machine is pretty funny, using the Washington Monument to smash Boy Scouts is great. They even bowl for the Easter Island statues. Honestly, I think this was the movie people were hoping they would get. But that's no fun, variety, visual humor, Pfft. Surely there's just Martians shooting shit again. <laughs> But ooh, they shake it up a bit. Like instead of a laser killing the first lady, a laser shoots a chandelier killing the first lady. <gasps> Commentary! Ooh, look, the boys who shot aliens in video games are now shooting aliens in real life. <gasps> Commentary! And the pointless tycoon character who's selling hotels gets killed selling a hotel in his hotel! Mind-blowing how much this reflects us. I'd say this is textbook writing irony, but you know what? This is preschool how to potty writing irony. Dane DeVito, for example, tries to bargain for his life by selling one of them his watch. You wanna know how much time was spent developing him? There's this. Am I the only one shooting crap here? This. Hey, you're Tom Jones, right? That's it. I like to think of him as his character from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, wandering onto the set and refusing to leave unless they wrote a part for him. Except that would make too much sense in a movie that makes none. And the movie promised Tom Jones, so there he is. He runs around with some of the stars, waving his arms. He apparently knows how to fly a plane. Are you sure you can fly this? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, I guess. That's about it. Tom Jones, everybody. Christ, wouldn't it have been a lot funnier if he was swinging one of those laser guns or saying badass lines or really saving the day? You have Tom Jones as himself. That's such a weird cameo. Have fun with it. Here, he's just kind of here. And yeah, okay, I guess that could be kind of funny if the rest of the cast wasn't just kind of here. When a character gets killed off, it doesn't even mean anything anymore. Lucas Haas' parents get killed in their trailer home. So, Rod Steiger gets shrunken down and stepped to death. So, even President Jack Nicholson getting killed by Martians somehow isn't as cool as it should be. They never took advantage of the characters they could become based on the people they chose to play them. Uh, look, Christopher Walken playing King Louis is a weird choice, but they have the kid run into a cowbell, they have him awkwardly sing in his goofy voice, they know what they're doing. Here, the first thought you have in your head of President Jack Nicholson or Tom Jones fighting Martians is a immediately funnier than what they actually did in this movie. Oh, but they put in an eye drop of irony in every one of those deaths so that somehow makes it clever? Potty book irony? Every once in a while there is a good joke. Like France thinking they made a friend, their attempts to use nudes totally backfiring, and probably my favorite line from the translator. Don't run, we are your friends. Scenes like that are great, and there needed to be a lot more of them. But instead, we just have a lot of running around, blasting, running around, blasting. What's happening over here? Oh yeah, running around, blasting. Maybe Jim Brown fighting them will be funny. Oh wait, this movie apparently decided it wanted to have heart, so this is now supposed to be serious. Even the waitress apparently tries to tell him not to go. I'll draw them away in a go. I said go! That was gut-wrenching. The Martians overpower him, though, and leave him dead on the ground. But luckily, Lucas Haas discovers the Martians' weakness, and that seems to be Slim Whitman music. It makes their heads explode. What's killing them? I think it must be my music. <sighs> okay. On principle, I can't like this. Not because I like Slim Whitman, but because I like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. They did the exact same thing to kill off the threat there too. It's the world's worst love song that kills off the monstrous invasion. 
Except that film actually did have no budget and enjoyably bad effects. And a smart enough sense of humor so that you know it was intentionally awful. It was a satire of B-movies that was also a B-movie. I don't know if anyone knew what was going on with this. Aside from stealing from other B-movies so poorly that you have no idea if it's an homage or just straight up stealing. Look, a parody can do an homage to another parody, but you gotta do something different. Doing the same joke doesn't mean you're clever, it just means you're doing the same joke. But it seems to work. All the Martians are destroyed, Parker and Bronson go down in one of their ships. Oh no, they were so funny. And Jim Brown's kids have to get used to living in a world without their dad. Or not. Um, wasn't the last time we saw him dead on the ground, covered by Martians that beat the shit out of him? Now he just has two scratches on his arms. Got us? Whatever. Look, Tom Jones! Yeah. It's not unusual to- Mars Attacks is... just as random as I remember it. It's not like the worst movie or anything. There are a handful of good laughs and nice nods to Martian movies, but it feels like it has no direction. It doesn't work as sci-fi satire because there's not enough variety of jokes. It doesn't work as social commentary because the characters aren't interesting or developed enough. It doesn't even really work as a troll movie. What a funny middle finger that would be to have all these big names in a movie and all you did was shoot them and do nothing with them at all but they're obviously trying to work in ironic or fitting ways that they die, trying to give the film meaning. The exact opposite of what a troll movie is supposed to do. I'll say this, it is fascinatingly bad. Lack of focus is usually not a good thing for a film, but for a Tim Burton movie, his lack of focus is always intriguingly strange. It's a boring mess, but it is interesting how and why it's a boring mess. So I guess that makes it interestingly boring? I don't know. It's a strange sum up, but it's a strange movie as well. Thank you, honey. But don't you dare let this happen again. I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Hey guys, here's even more reactions to what I just reviewed this week. There's some things I find questionable, like the fact that the aliens were defeated by polka music of all things. Huge movie. Tim Burton. Aliens. Love it. It's the best movie. Nah, 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 nah. The best part of this movie is just watching celebrities die. It's cheesy and overdone, with some pretty dated special effects and hammy performances by actors who should really know better. So of course I love every minute of it. Let's have two Jack Nicholson characters, because why not? It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. You want your reaction to be in the next Nostalgia Critic? Next week I'll be reviewing Lara Croft, Tomb Raider. Just download the Stardust app at the link below, follow us at Nostalgia Critic, record your reaction, and then tweet it to us with this hashtag. Or use Facebook. The ones we like best will make it in the next Nostalgia Critic video. We absolutely love going through and seeing everybody's different reactions. The over-the-top ones, the funny ones, there's such a wide variety out there and we love watching them. And you will too. So download the app, get out there, and show us your crazy reaction.